right, so we're going to have another uh, conversations with Kim in the car. Today, this is going to be about owner financing, creative owner financing, right? I know a lot of you have been talking about wanting to learn more about uh, owner financing in your deals. And there's there's a few aspects of it, and this is just going to be one one video I'm going to do in kind of a series that we'll, you know, go into more detail on and show some actual examples of, but I kind of wanted to get the, the juices going for you a little bit here. So owner financing can start, you know, when you buy a property, okay? And um, that could be that you're, you know, you're buying it to potentially even wholesale it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter because if you've got a deal with owner financing, whether that owner financing is that, you know, it's cash, they own it outright, and so you're really negotiating an owner finance deal, and I'll, again, in a, a later video, go into more detail about what that really means, or it could be subject to or a wrap process, okay? And I'll go into those um, in a little bit more detail as well. So, um, you know, you can start there, and if you're a wholesaler, you know, finding those kind of properties for people is, like gold. I mean, you know, for me as an investor who likes to hold properties, if you as a wholesaler can negotiate deals and you get really good at these owner financing creative um, deals that you can lock down, I could buy those from you all day long and probably a million other people could too, right? So um, it's important to kind of really understand that and see the value in that because that's a whole nother level to add to your wholesaling business. Now, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, you're a flipper or you're somebody that, that, that actually is gonna hold property, but you are gonna do a rehab, you know, you know either way, right? So it, it's good as you're talking to the seller to be able to see if you can creatively find a way for them to hold the loan for you during a period of time that you're rehabbing the property, whether you're flipping it or whether you're going to actually rehab it and then refinance it back out using the Burr method. So that might be something that is good for you because maybe it helps them, gives them a little bit more money in their pocket, so it sweetens the deal, right? Or it could be that you're doing that and it, it gets you a lower interest rate, right? And it, it, it just, it's an easy way to kind of step into it and not tap into and use all that private lending or hard money lending that you've, that you've lined up, right? Because you're lining that stuff up, right? So that you can be confident in doing deals and making offers. So, um, so, so again, it could be that these properties are cash owned and you're really just negotiating, you know, an owner financing, you know, deal that could be structured short term, long term, however makes sense for the owner. Um, it could be with a balloon, which means that, you know, after a certain amount of time, um, the loan comes due. And at that point, you just, you're refinancing it out, right? So, you know, you have enough time to make that happen. You have enough time to, to add value to the property, to increase the value of the property. Uh, and then be able to refinance it back out. And that you've already established relationships with people that you can refinance back out, right? You've worked that process out. Um, it could be that they do it long term. So a cash situation looks like this, right? Uh, I talk to an owner and through that conversation and through other research that I'm doing, I identify that they actually truly own this outright, okay? And so I could, I could offer them an option of, let's say I'm a flipper, right? And I could say, hey, you know, what are you doing with that cash? Is it possible that, you know, we could pay you some interest on the use of that cash for a period of time while we actually, you know, re renovate the property? Because they're gonna know, you're talking to them and you're sharing what you're doing. So they're gonna know that you intend to renovate the property and then potentially sell it and put a retail homeowner in it that will really just really love the property, right? So you could share with them, hey, you know, where's, you know, where's that money gonna go? And work out uh, that you pay them some interest and even defer the interest. So it could look like this. Um, you know, the owner has 100,000, you're paying them 100,000. You ask them if they can hold that 100,000. You can even ask them if they have some extra cash and they could give you money for rehab too. But at a minimum, they hold the 100,000, 
and then you go use your own cash for the rehab, but that 100,000 could be deferred interest payments, okay? So maybe you negotiate 10%, I'll just leave it simple. It could be lower, right? Could be higher depending on, you know, how savvy these people are or what you're willing to pay them. But at 10%, you'd be, you know, if you held it for six months, they'd be making another six grand on the deal. And if you defer the interest payments, that means you don't pay them while you're going. And then when it balloons, if it's six months or a year and you pay that off, then you're paying them their 100,000 plus the interest that accrued. Um, it could be that it's long-term, you know, and you're gonna hold the property and you negotiate simply, you know, hey, I'll pay you, you know, 100,000 and you might be able to pay them a little bit more. So let's say they really want to net 125 and you say, okay, great, I'll pay you 125,000. Um, and if you can do some financing for me and maybe we have a balloon in three to five years, maybe not at all, depending, you know, you're gonna feel them out. Um, maybe we um, could could get you that 125,000 and you, you know, that's net because we're gonna pay all your closing costs. So that could be structured where you say, look, I'll pay you, um, 125,000 for, you know, 180 months and, but a balloon at the end of that. And there's no interest on that, right? So whatever that payment would, would be, right, is what you're gonna pay them. And hopefully that would cash flow for you. And then in three to five years, and there's no pre-penalty, you always wanna negotiate no pre-penalty, you can then, you know, cash that out. Um, so that would be a good thing to do. Now, let's talk about a situation that, you know, we're, we're actually just got a lead. Um, we, we get some leads from Facebook advertising. So we just got a lead and it's in an, a neighborhood actually that we used to own a property in. So we know a lot about the neighborhood. And this person just really doesn't want to deal with people coming in our house. She doesn't really want to deal with agents and selling her property. So, but she does want to try to get, you know, near market value for the property. So, you know, my wheels are going, you know, like always like, okay, well, how can I step in? Um, I'm a, I'm a licensed agent in Florida too, right? But how can I step in and, and actually help this person out? They want to sell, they want to then, you know, move to another area um, because they feel like, there's a better neighborhood for them and her, it's her and her fiance. And how can we actually help them manage that and still make a little bit of money, right? By doing this and keep ourselves whole. And so um, one of the things that we found out is that they have a couple of mortgages, but the total balance of those are like 78,000 and the payments on them might equal $600. So for me, what if we could negotiate with, with them right we got to figure out okay i can make your monthly payment so give us six months to do this deal you go we, we close the transaction we do it subject to your existing mortgages or put a wrap on it and we're going to pay your mortgages and you can you can now move out and get this other place that you want give us six months to work on you know finding a new buyer and if we give them a price, we, we set a net price, we say we're gonna make your monthly payment so you don't have to worry about them, right? And then that's $600. And we can even defer that or we can give it to them. You know, we can, we well, we're, we're not deferring it, we gotta pay them, right? Um, in this situation, we would actually make those payments so they don't have to actually pay that, right? And that frees them up to make payments on something else. So we do that. Now, I don't think this place is gonna need a lot of work. Okay, so maybe we don't have to invest anything into this place. We lock it up for a low enough price that it lets us pay their closing costs, right? Lets us close the deal and we now have ownership and we're making their payments. We go ahead now and market the property without doing anything to it potentially. Okay, this is just a potential scenario. So we put it in the MLS because I'm a licensed agent and I put it in at a discount. And I already know that, that things are selling pretty quickly in that neighborhood and they're selling at a certain value. So if I come in underneath that and this place still looks good, it's cleaned out, it looks good, it's, you know, there's nothing wrong, you know, maybe, may, and maybe we put five or 10,000 in it. I don't know, maybe we paint it. Maybe we do some flooring, I don't know yet. But again, if I give them a price that keeps me whole, will pay my closing cost on the front to, to just secure it and buy it, um, and or maybe even 
maybe even I, I, I don't, maybe it's a contract, you know, for deed or something. There's all kinds of options here is what I'm trying to get at, right? So, but we do that and then we turn around and we sell it and we, we pay the closing costs that we have to our portion for when we sell it. But when I do that, as long as I can make enough to cover the closing costs, the holding costs that I'm going to have, which would include the payments I'm making over time, okay, any rehab I do, and I could come out with $10,000 on the other side because this isn't a place that needs a lot of work. I mean, absolutely not. And I could come out in less, uh, probably in three months or less. The other side with ten dollars or $15,000, why not do that? And it's an owner-created, potentially financed deal. That's just one way, okay? So um, there's a lot of creativeness that you can get into with looking at doing um, owner financing or creative financing, I'll call it. And I, and I really want you to start thinking about that and looking at every deal about how could I have structured that that way. So I am going to do some other videos. And I'm going to go into more examples of how we've done things with people, right? Or things that maybe you could have done or even show you examples of things that I found that were done, right? Where you got something and you bought it subject to or with a wrap and then you turn around and sell it on top of that to somebody else and you're, you're making cash flow on that, but now they have a contract for deed. So you're being creative on the front end, right? But then you're also helping somebody else and being creative on the back end. And that's an easy way to sell even distressed properties that you don't even have to do any work to because people are looking for those properties and they don't have to go get them financed. So there's two sides of this to start looking at. So I hope this helps. Um, really, really, really get intense about this because I'm going to take you down some paths of some examples, talk about things, go into more education around subject to what does that really mean? A wrap mortgage, what does that really mean? If you're doing owner financing with somebody, what does that really look like? If it's, if they own it outright with cash, right? Um, and then, you know, you always want to work with an attorney or a closing agent that also understands these strategies, okay? So not just somebody that you trust, but you know, and you may have closed deals with them, but they need to understand these strategies because they are the ones who are gonna make or break you, okay? All right, hope this was good. Talk to you soon and you know, stay tuned for the next uh, you know, videos that are gonna come out about this whole creative uh, financing situation. All right, bye-bye.